This is the truth. This is better for all concerned. Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? Okay. First of all, President Thea, Rotarians, visitors, and guests. See, I learned that today. I listened to all of you. So uh, the convention center was uh, opened in 2009. I was talking to some folks out of, out of this meeting. That was pretty much a time when you wouldn't want to open a convention center, down economy and so on. So what we're going to do today is we're going to show a little bit of what we're doing for the marketing, and then we're going to show what the, uh, the results are as far as the um, the business community around the convention center. We got about 100 of them a uh, survey. And then we're going to look at the economic impact. And then we're going to look at it in comparison to what the commitment was back in 2000. I think all of these things are, are relevant because if you just look at the economic impact, it may not tell the whole story. So being spring, I thought I'd give you a nice spring picture. But I will tell you, this isn't going to look like this until April. Just saying. So this is going to be next week. Uh, American Quilter Society, one of our largest events. It's been in the convention center each year since we opened. And quite honestly, we stumbled on this. There used to be a quilt event at the host, uh, that, uh, that meeting planner, our, our uh, event uh, developer, wanted to get out of the business. And when they left the host, this company came to us to bring their event. Now, when I say they're having an event, we all think about, oh, they're doing it so we can walk in the door, we can see product, we can see different quilts. The truth is, it's a publishing company. So they're here to recruit people to be their customers. So how long will they stay in Lancaster? I would thought it would have been five years. To say 10, boy, we're doing really well. That means they're getting more subscribers every year. When they feel they have fished out this pool, they'll move on to the next community. I only say that because if you understand what the objectives of the, of the events are, you can figure out the frequency or why they're coming or why they're leaving. In the convention center world, we do not have, uh, there, there's usually a cycle. An event to happen every year is a rarity. So we've been very grateful to have AQS. And this is the uh, part of it that's really interesting. It, these are works of art, these quilts. Uh, they, some of these quilts can sell up to $50,000 each, most of them are highly insured, and they are definitely highly secured during the event. And as you can see, they're not letting people touch them and the, and the like. They do a beautiful job, and if you haven't been to this show, this is one of the big components. Now, they also have prize money, and I believe it's somewhere around ten dollars to $20,000 for the top quilt in the uh, show. This is another event you're going to see around town. Uh, this one is the uh, anime, uh, we call it, it's ZenkaCon is the name, and these are folks who really enjoy the anim anime uh, cartoons, and some of them dress the roles of the, uh, some of the characters. In fact, I'm going to say most of them. And uh, I've, I've heard a lot of stories um, over the last couple of weeks of people saying, oh, yeah, I hang out at the press room and watch them go up and down the street, or, you know, it, it is a, a visual. And so when we talk about events that have the greatest impact, I think some of it is because they remembered it. And this is one of those events that will be memorable when it's in your community. So let's kind of talk about uh, what has happened since 2010 when the, uh, actually we opened in 2009. I didn't think the data would be applicable being a six month year. So I did not include that in my slides today. I did 2010 and beyond. So when we talk about use of Freedom Hall, we were at 45% utilization in our first full year. I will tell you, that is phenomenal. But there's a story behind that that may not be so phenomenal. We're up to 56% in 2018. That is also phenomenal. So in Lancaster, there has been a need from the get-go to have the venue. But here's the interesting. You notice I changed the colors. Prior to 2015, when there was a collaboration agreement done, the, the focus of the types of events that were in the building changed. Josh and the sales team, from the day we opened until the end of 2014, would get any event that would sign a contract and pay the freight to be in there. But there's a downside when you do that. It's kind of like revenue management. So if you have a business, you know, what's going to give you the best revenue? 
For the convention center authority and our operator in a state hotels and resorts, what we care about is the events that provide the greatest economic impact. So prior to 2014, that wasn't our driving guide. And if you looked at when we hit 54%, that means there's some dates are not gonna be available for the events we wanna have. So we really had to knuckle down and saying, we've gotta make a, a better effort on seeking out, finding folks who wanna to come to Lancaster. Oops, I hit the wrong slide, didn't I? Okay. Okay, so the next one is the attendance. And this is where it starts to get good. So I told you that uh, the sales team would sell to anything that would move in the first couple of years. We had some events in there. We had a circus in there. We've had bears in there. We've had camels in there. Josh even had a reptile show, and he knew I was not really fond of that show. And the next day, he promised they got 80% of the reptiles and snakes out of the building. <laughs> that guy's so nice to me. Jeez. But you can see, when you do a lot of flat shows, and flat shows are literally on a flat surface. They can be a home show, a camper show, an RV show, a, a reptile show, or any of those types of things. Those are for us local people to go, take out our wallets and buy the goods and services and so on. So we're really recycling the same dollar in Lancaster. And that's really not our mission. And in 2011, and, uh, the, the Convention Center Authority Board changed its mission because it was originally to open and operate a, uh, a convention center that you know, was well operated, um, a, a nucleus for our community and all those things. But it didn't change the mission to being economic benefit to Lancaster City and Lancaster County. That was a major change. So Josh and, and the team tried to do a nice job with the resources they had. It wasn't until 2015 when the collaboration agreement was put in place, and the collaboration agreement to help everyone, was when the financing for the authority's bonds were up. Um, I almost said Senator Martin, but at the time, Commissioner Martin got all the parties together, the bank, Discover Lancaster, the city, the county, and really worked towards uh, having a, an a solution to the financing for a five-year period, as well as make an effort to, make some, to have a consortium for marketing. And we would have a representative from the county, a representative from the city, myself, and we would give direction, as well as funding, to the marketing department to go, uh, go after larger events that provide greater economic benefit. That document was signed in middle of 2014, and then we uh, signed on with Interstate to pick up that piece in their qualified management agreement. So 2015 and beyond has been to do those efforts. So what happened? So when we look at priority ones and twos, or total priority events, we were just kind of answering the phone and doing our best. We did not have an effort of an, a, a dedicated person to go to trade shows and really lure those events. We were relying heavily on you know, uh, Discover Lancaster or PDCVB or those who uh, saw our registrations and directories and so on. But once we started to put a dedicated individual on it, uh, Jason Thompson, if you know who he is, he goes out and has done a nice job in picking up and we're expecting in 2019 to have 20 as well as in 2020 to have 20, those will be our best. Now there's a piece missing from this. When we have events where we cannot, uh, do not understand the lodging with it, we do not put in there. So I'll give you an example. We have a religious group, uh, John Hagee. They come in for two and a half days, they fill up the room with 6,000 people and people are everywhere all over the county. I don't count that as a priority one event because I have nowhere, no way of knowing how many people are registered, how many coming from out of town to be able to call it a priority one or priority two. But we do receive data on the industry and we do know that the hotel rooms in Lancaster County jump significantly because that's a big jump in the midweek. So we do know it happens, we just don't know to what effect and we cannot call it a priority one and two. Another one, for anyone who's in downtown Lancaster in the months of April and May, Eh, probably a little bit of March too, is the dance competitions. 
The dance competitions are a phenomenal event for the convention center. Just think about it. Almost every attendee is from out of town. They are staying in lodging places. They're spending money at the mall, the outlets, and all those sort of things, and having a great time. They get to see Lancaster at its best. We in Lancaster get the, the privilege of them to come, but we cannot put them on here. And as uh, last year, we had nine of those events. So when we talk about having 20 priority one and two priority events, it's more like 30, nine plus one, but I can't put them on there, but I might as well explain because you would think we had empty dates. That's not the case. So let's take it on the next piece. What do we have coming up? Well, I made this out a couple weeks ago. So we have a fly fishing show, which is a great event. Uh, a lot of Dropkick Murphy. Anyone here go to that movie, that concert the other night? Oh, come on. It was a great show. Uh, then, then you can see the Sheer Elite International. That's one of the dance and cheer competitions. ZenkaCon, Quilta Society. So we have a lot of events going on right through uh, the end of April. Uh, really strong time of year. But just to give you an idea of what's going on out there. So what we do, and actually the sales team does, so that, remember, if we're going to be economic impact, it doesn't stop with just filling the building. We now need to let the merchants know that these people are coming. That way they can have product, they can have their staff, and they can be open. So uh, the sales team provides to uh, Lancaster City Alliance the update of what is going to be for capacities. Tell, tells in some cases the event, some cases they don't, and it kind of gives you an idea. And if you notice this, uh, on the bottom here, there is a no pl meals planned, no meals planned, no meals planned. That's a sign to the restaurants, be ready. Because if you're looking at these attendance numbers, seven, uh, 750, 725, 750, 150, that could be a big boom. So you can see how this, this document being sent around has a lot of value to the merchants, or could have. So here's another piece, and I, I th sometimes it's missed. And I've got to update this through 2018 and haven't done it yet. But one of the things we do is we look at why people don't come to the convention center when we're out there trying to lure business. Now, not everything we can fix. Space availability, can't change it. Different destination, and Sue, this is code for someone really wanted it someplace else, even if we did meet the criteria. Accurate? Okay, so we can't change that, no way. So the lodging piece, and we all know in downtown Lancaster, there's the uh, Hotel Lancaster is gonna become the Holiday Inn. I'm a big fan, a branded hotel, convention quality. I was in it the other day with Sam Wilsker and John Meter, it's coming along great. Uh, I'm, I'm excited at what they can do there because now we can look at a greater percentage of the market that can come to our building because of that lodging piece. And we'll get into that in a minute. So then, then we look at parking. Parking is another one. That's, those are two we can in, uh, effectuate, meaning we can talk about it, we can share with people, and I'm excited to see how this will change after 2019 on that lodging piece and it actually may grow. How could that be? We just added those rooms. Because we're gonna be marketing to a larger audience because we can uh, impact or host a greater number of events. So it, it's kind of a misnomer. This is basically fit in the fishing hole we're using now. This is the response. We're gonna be changing our fishing hole because we have more lodging rooms within walking distance. So the others are the venue size. Again, we can't change that. Uh, the other, which is transportation, economic conditions, and contract requirements. So when we talk about um, transportation, we're pretty much a rubber tire market today. And we were talking about this over at the table. That you basically have to drive to Lancaster. If you're going, most of your attendees are going to have to drive to the, uh, to the convention center for them to, to attend. They're not taking flights as a primary way to get here. But I think that's going to change some. In Harrisburg, at the airport, the, the uh, Amtrak station is going to change to being right next to Hack and across the street from the airport. This could have a value to us. So we were uh, joking that last year, uh, uh, no, two years ago, we did Linking Lancaster, which was an online event, which through Twitter, 
We took pictures as Mary Ellen and I took our suitcases, got on the trolley, went to the Amtrak station, waited for the train to go to the airport and get the long-term shuttle. One problem, of all the days of the year, the train was running 40 minutes late. We just told the world that the, plane, the train is 40 minutes late. So we stayed true to it. We finished that whole leg. We got there. We clicked the time. But we also said, you know what? We're going to go back. And we were back in no time. We were back in 30 minutes or less because the timing really hit. And at, 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 today, the link is really not, a, is not as good as it's going to be. You have to use the long-term shuttle, uh, long-term parking shuttle to really make it work today. So we, we're looking forward to that Amtrak station being completed. We think that's going to be part of our marketing, especially with ZenkaCon, who already uses Amtrak as a primary server. Uh, transportation server. The economic conditions, I think that's going to apply for all events. And I was also sharing with one of the groups beforehand, the convention center is really a mirror of our economic conditions. People aren't able to attend in down economy, whether that means the business is cutting back or the individuals are cutting back, or in a strong economy, people have disposable income or businesses are looking to grow. So we kind of have to look at it this way that not, you can have the greatest marketing plan, but if the, the economy's in the tank, we're going to have less people attending and less events. That's just part of, part of the equation. Okay, so we talked about the number of hotel rooms and how it affects the market. So if you just took the Mary available, committable rooms, I understand they have 300 rooms, but they uh, have obligations to the Marriott brand that they have to have rooms available for their customers and their contracts and so on. So committable rooms is about 200. But if you add into it the Doubletree or it's the Best Western, and you get that up to 500, you have the ability to market to somewhere around 62% of the events that can fit in your building. We're still not marketing to 100%. So if you can add to it the Holiday Inn slash Hotel Lancaster and the 100 rooms that the um, Marriott that's bringing on, you can see how we're going to be growing, oops, we're going to be growing into what percentage of the events we can capture to come to Lancaster. But I think it will also change why people turn us away because they'll look at it from a different perspective. And we are also going to different events to market it. So if we're going to trade shows that have events that are smaller, yeah, we're, we're fishing in a barrel. If we start fishing with some of the bigger boys, and the bigger buildings, we're going to have a lot more competition. But it doesn't take many events to be successful. I always tell Jason, for every show, if you get one event out of it, life is really good. And, and that's, that's really the success. He may come back with 10 RFPs, but he's got to follow that out. And I should share, um, and I'll hit the convention center board later, but Sharon Nelson, who's been on the board for a number of years, has really uh, held accountable the sales and marketing efforts that they have to show for as far, uh, far later as two years after going to a trade show of what is being converted from an RFP right on through. It's either going to be lost business or we're going to have a signed contract. So I, I, I applaud Sharon for making sure in a public setting that we're doing that. Yeah, they're not revealing all the names or who they are, but they're at least holding them accountable that you said we had this many RFPs and let's follow them right through to the end so we can see what happens. That helps that return on investment piece. So what's happening in uh, March of, two uh, I'm sorry, the 2018 metrics, what happened last year? We had 69 Freedom Hall events. We teeter between 68 and 74 events a year. There's only so many days in the calendar. And quite frankly, so the summer months, Memorial Day to Labor Day, and between uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas, or just after that, is a really tough time to get events. And the reason being is, if people are on vacation and you're holding an event, you're not getting everyone you want in your market to go to that. And the corporate events is even harder, because you make it mandatory for people to go, but they're going to be on vacation. So summertime and Christmas, uh, Thanksgiving to Christmas are really difficult times. Well, you just cut that calendar of 50, 52, day, 52 weeks down to somewhere around 39. So if you're looking at it, we're having 69 events, you can bet we're turning that, building, that room over. Uh, now, there's also uh, uh, event days. Uh, the attendance, I think it's actually 
201,000 and change in attendance in uh, last year, 18 new events. That kind of talks about that turnover. That's you know, roughly a, a quarter of it. 13 events overflowed of uh, multiple hotels. That's music to my ears. Because if we're gonna have economic benefit, we need to overflow to many hotels because every hotel is kind of like a, uh, uh, a center point for that individual to where they're gonna go to dinner, you know, what they're gonna do for activities. Oh, I have a headache, where am I going to get my, my aspirin? You know, all those sort of things. And for every time you spread them out to different areas, that, that benefit comes off centric to that hotel location. We're all travelers, you know what I'm talking about. And we do have 20 events that overflow to at least one hotel. Um, and that, that will vary by the meeting plan. They all have their different needs. So in um, December, Tom Hazinski of HVS provided an economic impact study and a presentation to the county commissioners. So I'm gonna just hit some of his slides. I'll point out some really important parts of it, but I'm not him. But I will tell you, uh, if you really want to get down to the nuts and bolts, A, on my website, and we will get to that in a minute, lcca.com, the whole report is available. And if you go to the city council meeting of two weeks ago, there's a um, YouTube, and he gave his presentation, and that is available there as well. So first thing is the survey of business owners. And, and I kind of shared that. Of all the um, Tom Mazinski's customers, and he's been around doing this for a long time, we're the first one to ask for a survey of the business owners as well as the attendees. Because we want to see the match, or if there isn't a match, that gives us some ammunition to how we re-gear our marketing or our, our communications to the community. Because we already told you that this, um, Lancaster City Alliance is sending out all that information to our uh, businesses around the convention center. How are they seeing us now that they're getting that information? So, what type of businesses? 38 are retail, 24 bar and restaurant, uh, other services, galleries, of course galleries, cultural institutions. So that gives you an idea of what we're looking at, but 62% of them are in the restaurant bar piece of the business. Uh, piece. So, when did your business open? Pretty significant number started after 2000. So this has been a really good story of downtown Lancaster from 2000 to present. Uh, that's been real growth. And as you can see from 2009, when we opened, the convention center opened, it was 45%. Just give you some background. So under the business activity, how much did, does your business increase during a week with an LCCC event? So this has kind of been the slide that catches a lot of attention. Because the zero to 5%, you have 41%. That means we have 59 that are not, or that, that are. But how do we evaluate that 41%? Now, there's two things to look at it. Not everyone's services is going to be for uh, the attendees. Like, if I go to a conference, my first thing isn't going to be, I'm going to go get a tattoo while I'm there. You may want a particular artist, so you may not be doing it that way. Or there may be other business. You may not bring your pet with you, so you may not be using uh, the uh, Pets Plus, or, uh, the first aid place on King Street. So we have to look at it that not every business is geared for the, uh, the conference and convention attendee. They may be for all of us. But then you look at the rest of it, 4% saying over 25% of their business is from the convention center. That's a pretty strong number. I'm going to guess Annie Bailey's is one of them. Just guessing. I think our sales team is doing that. Uh, the, uh, the, then you see 20 to 25% at 12, and then you have 15 to 20% at 6. So really what we're saying there is about 25%, I think that's 23%, are really seeing significant benefit. And I think that directly hit that restaurant bar piece we saw in the beginning. So what events have the most impact? This is, I'm not responsible for this data because some of these may be someone's favorite event and it's not going to get its due, especially when we were talking about the McCaskey earlier in today's, uh, because the, unfortunately from the business owners, McCaskey graduation got a zero. 
they don't see any impact from the McCaskey graduation. I'm really surprised at that, but part of that is they may not have recognized that someone was downtown for the graduation. And I, I think that's an important distinction to recognize. Because let's look at the, the events that do get highly recognized. Roots and Blues. Well, that event is a lot of fun. We, are, we do have a fair amount of people coming in from out of town. We don't have a handle on what that is to call that a priority event or not. But I can tell you from talking to hoteliers that that is a significant event to get folks from out of town. Seems to be a lot from Philly, New Jersey, and the like, probably based on their marketing. Uh, corporate event. So this is where I have a personal problem with it. Corporate event means you just lumped all of the corporate events and made it 42%. So they kind of tweak things a little bit here. There's another one in dance and cheerleading. Those nine dance cheerleading competitions, they're seeing as 28%, but that's a, a lump of all of them. So you, know, you might have to divide that by nine to really figure out each individual impact. Really don't know. The Chamber of Commerce was another interesting one. That's an event after five o'clock. It's in downtown, and it's for us Lancastrians. I'm just really surprised that merchants see that as um, an event that they get a, uh, a, a bump from, which is great. I mean, that, you couldn't be happier. Launch, I think that's a very easy one. In fact, I thought that would have been higher on the list because th that's a conference for those folks who are in bands uh, in, 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 of all different genres, whether it's country, rock, and whatever. And then they all perform in different venues around the downtown, which has to help the attendance and the traffic of folks coming around. It is definitely a fun event if you hadn't seen that. State association event. Well, again, we lumped a lot of them into that. Um, again, we didn't play a role in this, and, but I do want to report the data. And Mary Kay Conference. That's a real interesting one that's usually in the second week of March. Uh, they rotate that around. It's very easy to tell the, uh, the attendees since they all have different badges and the like, and their vehicles are very easy to recognize too. Uh, so the volleyball event is 14%. That one surprised me a little bit. First of all, it's usually in January, so us folks aren't really around for that, so anyone who else is out is from the volleyball event. I'm guessing they're not being recognized as being from the volleyball event when they took the survey. See, these people didn't know the day, a full year that this survey was coming. They were just given the survey and it's top of mind. And sometimes we can miss some of those things when it happens. And we hit the McCaskey graduation. So how important is the LCC to your business? So, you can say that there's a, a third of them between 8 and 10%. Uh, I be, gave between an 8 and a 10, which is great. But we also looking on the uh, third is also looking at uh, giving it a 1, 2, or 3. Again, type of business plays into this. 16% of the business may have not existed but for the convention center, which I thought was a real interesting piece. And that is down here at the bottom. Would you have opened your business without the LCCA? And you get 16%. Clearly, someone had a, a, some of these folks had business plans that included the traffic that's coming from the convention center. Good for them. Uh, also, this 54% had a significant impact of uh, 6 to 10. Uh, great. I'm thrilled to see that. But my focus is really on how do we uh, look at how to the merchants look at what people are coming in the door, whether that means we give attendees a buffalo nickel or something that screams, Harry, I'm, I'm from an event at the convention center. We really haven't figured that piece out yet, but we're, we're trying to work on it. So this is uh, the part of the Tom uh, talked about the economic impact piece. And so his, his basic deal is the new demand, the spending per unit gives you new direct spending, so then you have the uh, direct and then the indirect, which means those who are receiving funds from uh, an attendee, they go and spend that money. So there is, there's that piece in there as well. And the induced is really an interesting term. So when you increase uh, a lane on a highway, it's amazing how you have more cars there. So if you add meeting space to your community, your community has more at meetings than they were without having that. So the difference between what the number of meetings that were in prior to the convention center being here in the community to when we opened the convention center, those new are called induced. So that is a very important piece 
because our marketing department has told, has, is told to not market any events that are existing in Lancaster County. That still holds today. We're not here to uh, cannibalize existing business. Now, clearly, some events outgrow whatever ven venue there are, and when they come to us, we tell them, make sure whatever venue we're at, you tell them that you've outgrown it, because we're not here to be competition with any venue that's already existing. So the outcome is in the impact. That's dollars and jobs, and that's the focus of the economic impact. So we talked about attendance early. I wanted to just break it down to these. Um, the, the area of study for Tom, uh, HVS is economic impact. And as you can see, uh, we've had some great growth in here, but I do want to point out the high impact event growth is convention, conferences, and sports. Those are the ones that provide the greatest economic impact, and I will point those out as the slides go on. So another piece of the puzzle is overnight visitors versus day trippers. So if there's an event that only lasts a day, obviously most, most of the attendees are day trippers or, or some of the local, uh, that ratio is improving. If you can see, the, the, um, the red is the day trippers. And yes, that's a big part of what we're doing because we are a rubber tire market. But we started slowly growing and we're getting there. That's really good news. We want to continue to make those numbers. It's only dwarfed because of the great numbers of the day trippers, but frankly, we're up to 50,000 uh, of overnight visitors, and we're looking for that number to only grow, especially as we're going for lar larger events. So let's talk about length of stay. Uh, this is an important piece, because when someone tells you how many priority events they have, that is really shallow in that it doesn't have the depth. You can have five events of five days each, or you can have 10 events that are one day each. I'd rather have the five events with five days because then they're staying overnight, they're eating, they're doing all those sort of things in our community. So overnights is a big part of it and length of stay is very important. So when we look at this, uh, length of stay at 6%, okay. 34% two days, that's our biggest number, 23, 26. So those are some pretty healthy numbers in multiple days, up to four. We, we don't do so uh, well after uh, five days, but that still, that's some pretty healthy numbers. The events that were, um, um, this data was collected from was Quilters, um, Eastern Winery Exposition, Voice of the, uh, the Prophets, and those three have three distinctive type of attendees. They're not from the same market, which is why it was so important to uh, HVS. They, uh, they had 629 unique responses, meaning individuals giving a response. So here's the thing about Lancaster's uh, economic impact study. Tom has been, as I said, has been doing this for 19 years. Very few of his customers want specific data from the attendees who actually went to that events at the convention center. We paid the premium for it, but he actually took the time, it took him over a year to do it, and he got 629 unique responses. So now we have real data of real human beings who are really taking out their wallets and are really paying for things. We're not page 29 of some chart for some national statistics. This is uh, real attendees. So the reason why I'm pointing this out to you is this is reflective to our market. Because when I flip this page, it's gonna tell you the spending they're making and some of them are really low. Good example, parking. Has anyone been to Philadelphia parking lately? 40 bucks, easy. So here we go. Let's look at parking. Uh, where is par parking? So for the overnight visitor, they're average 354. Now I'm gonna be honest with you. They could, be, they could be traveling to people so it could be averaged out. Some of them may be pay not paying at all, some could be paying full freight, but it's 354. I am guessing in the Philadelphia Convention Center when they had their economic impact study done, that's not $3.54. I am also guessing that other goods and services in our community are more Lancaster County pricing and not Philadelphia pricing. So we really can't evaluate ourselves to Philadelphia because again, 
we are representative of our economy. And Lancaster County's economy is different than Philadelphia's, it's different than Erie's, it's different than Pittsburgh's. So, because one of the big things in my industry is, hey, let's compare numbers. Well, you really can't. You have to figure out, are you a rubber tire market? How big is your market? How big is your building? How many hotels do you have? There's just so many variables in here. And it's really important that I get this out to you folks to understand we're playing with the cards we have. So uh, hotel expenses, $90. Uh, restaurants and meals, $32. So if they're spending $32 a day, even if they s skip breakfast, that's rather inexpensive. Just saying. Now, uh, auto fuel, auto rental, uh, retail purchases. Retail pur purchases, that's not a bad number. Uh, parking, we talked about. Entertainment and recreation, $1.31. That seemed low to me. Uh, and I don't know what the other is at 597, but if you so you see 160 dollars for the um, for the overnighters, and we saw in that chart earlier how much more people we have in the over uh, how how many less people we had 50,000 in 2017 of the overnighters, and it's 21 dollars and 71 cents for the day trippers. My guess is if you go day trip into Philadelphia, you're going to spend more in parking than that that 21 dollars. And I'm not bashing Philadelphia for that. I'm just trying to make a comparison. So when we start looking at uh, the event duration, this is an interesting one. This has been pretty flat for the conventions and conferences at three. And that's the number one category for getting folks to stay overnight. So that's, that's good news. Concerts, of, I don't know where the three came from unless it was a multi-day thing. Socials are usually you know, one or none. Uh, assemblies are usually like a religious or a, uh, uh, something where you're sitting down in a theater style and you're listening to somebody. Uh, sports competitions, which the chair and dance goes into, that's another big category, and it's a 2.8. So if we're averaging 3.0 for conventions and conferences and 2.8 for the sports competitions, that's a healthy number. We can try to, we can try to bring that up, but that's going to be hard. So... I'm going to run through a couple of these things. Average room night by type of um, category. Again, uh, 377 is the average for conventions and conferences. And it was 493 for assemblies and 220, I'm sorry, uh, sports competition, 168. So where you wanted to look at this, I'm going to click it. The economic impact for the convention center for the city is $34 million. 65,000 people and $34 million. In the county, it is less. And let me explain why. If you lived out of the county and came in, then your dollar counts as economic benefit for the county. If you live out of the city and you come into the city, that's economic impact for the city. And that's why that number is higher. And same goes for the, uh, the state and so on. So I'm gonna just run here. This is our uh, uh, looking at the city, um, sorry, the county number of the 26.9, and it was promised in 2000 that it would be $16 million, and in 2018 dollars, that's $23 million. So from what you were promised into what happened in 2017, we've delivered. We still need to become more consistent with this. We need to make all those years beat that, those expectations and we're working on that. Again, we only started doing this in 2015 for the marketing of larger events. Uh, there's the 34 million for the city. There was no predetermination or expectation set on what the city's economic impact, so I don't have a blue line for you. So this is the commitments in 2005 to a city council, um, county commissioner meeting, increased tourism, it talked about the attendance, it was going to be 104 to 132,000, and in 2017 we had 211. So the, here's prior to um, construction, the total, I'm sorry, the total attendances by category, this is where I really want everyone to focus on, is this number right here, because the 211 
let's not focus on how many people come in the building. Let's focus on the people who come in that provide the greatest economic impact. So the benchmark we're going to take away is 56,000 people came in to the convention center for a convention and conference, and that's the number we want to keep growing. Um, Financing plan, we just signed a new term with Wells Fargo, and with the, thank, uh, with the help of the commissioners and Discover Lancaster, we're good for another five years as of December. Um, enhanced marketing, in 2005, PDCVB, Discover Lancaster, indicated they would work actively to attract conventions. In 2019, we have the marketing consortium, which we talked about. The uh, economic impact we talked about in uh, the, the commitment was 11 to 16 million for the county, and in 2017 dollars, that's 23 million. We talked about that earlier, and we actually did 26, which was 13% higher. The annual operations, uh, we talked about jobs on site. The promise was 27 managerial and support of between two to 300, and actually it's 32 managerial and 225 support. That's as of November, which was probably a lower time. We probably have a higher number now. Uh, the other big one, area of revitalization, this, uh, rejuvenate the city's focal point, Penn Square, work on the Watt and Shan and Montgomery House landmarks, honor Thaddeus Stevens, his birthday is April 4th, for, for the birthday table next time, uh, and then pr provide a catalyst for restaurants, entertainment, hotels, uh, and so on in downtown. Um, my best number from um, Marshall Snively is 150 net new businesses to downtown Lancaster, and the Watt and Shannon Montgomery House landmarks have been re renovated and vital element to Lancaster. Uh, just to touch on this, because I'm short on time, very short, that uh, Lancaster School District has the Penn Square Hospitality. It's a program where students who are not planning to go on to college after high school, uh, they, um, they join our program, they do job shadowing, they go part-time, and many of them become full-time afterwards, which is what the intention of the program is. Uh, this is a big one. This is more of a, uh, a house cleaning. Lancaster County is no longer going to be a class three county. The next time the census, it's going to be a two A. And the General Assembly had provided new legislation that if we become a two A, that we can keep our authorization as a third class county. And there's our board members, which you can see that all on our website, lcca.com. And thank you for the time for listening to today's 